two of them on the log. One of them they sent out a press release for, the other one they didn't. Um, the one from the press release, that was about 10.45 p.m. last night. This was at the uh, Joker's Casino near 31st and Minnesota Avenue. Uh, this case, we had a black man. He was uh, thought to be around five foot three. He was wearing all dark clothes. He walked in, uh, and this one, with the weapon. Let me find out what weapon that is. <coughs> I think that was a gun. Um, yeah, he had a gun. Um, the clerk was the only one in at the time, in the business at the time, came in, showed the gun, got cash, and then left. Uh, and I don't... Looks like he, they, f the, the clerk thought he may have left in a vehicle, but we didn't get any description of that. They do have surveillance footage, so we're working on getting that. Hopefully we'll be able to get some of that out today. Uh, the other robbery, that was at <coughs> the Happy Jacks Casino. And this was just before 7 p.m. last night. This was on uh, East Arrowhead Parkway, uh, the 4600 block. Uh, this one, our suspect is a white guy, and he had a towel over his head. Uh, he had dark colored clothes. He didn't have any weapon, didn't uh, say he had a weapon, but came in and he basically announced that it was a robbery. He grabbed cash and then left. And I don't know, we didn't have any descriptions, so we're not sure if he left in a car or just left on foot. So and this is not a turban, this is a literal towel he wore on his head, not over his face. Correct. Like wrapped over his head. It just a says a towel over his head, so I don't, I don't know that it was, <clears throat> I haven't seen any of the surveillance video. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Because you know, it just says he had a towel on his head, so I don't think it was wrapped. I think he just had a towel on his head. Do you know how much money he got away with? Yes, but we don't give out specific amounts on robberies, so an undisclosed amount, I guess. Uh, they do have surveillance su surveillance video. I. I don't think we've received it yet either, but that's another one. So um, <clears throat> a bunch of robberies this month. I, mean, I don't know how else to phrase this, but we've had six so far, six businesses. There were a couple of other um, robberies where I guess a, just a person, it wasn't a business that was the victim. But um, December 5th was the first one that we had. That was at hy V. That suspect it was either a Native American or a Hispanic man. He had a knife. On December 8th, that was the Casey's on East Rice Street. Uh, Prentice Almond had a knife. We made an arrest in that case. On December 9th, the get and go at 15th and Cliff, the suspect in that case was a Hispanic man with a gun. December 11th, was the get and go at 57th and Marion. That was a white man with a gun. And then just the most recent two, uh, Happy Jacks on December 11th, that was a guy with a towel on his head, no weapon was displayed. And then also on the December 11th was Joker's Casino and that was a black man with a gun. <coughs> I don't I don't think he had anything I don't see anything in the report about that um, oh he, he did have some 
He said he had a black mask. I'm not sure. <clears throat> this is Joker's Casino. So let me see if I says anything. Just says a, a black mask that covers his face. Um, the clerk was able to see around the eyes, and that's how she was able to, to tell that it was a black man. Um, let's see. So, you know, one of the I, there's certainly a chance that some of these cases may be linked to each other, but. You know, when we have a Native American or Hispanic man and then a white white man, um, sometimes people mistake different ethnicities or different races. So there could be some similarities, but, you know, when we see, you know, one person using a knife, another person using a gun, what we've seen in the past is people that are committing robberies are fairly consistent with the weapons that are using. So uh, they're not likely to switch. If they use a gun in one instance, they're not likely to come back with a knife another time to, to rob a place. Having such a large number of robberies in a short amount of time isn't necessarily nothing new. It's not that common, but I think what we've seen in the past trends have, have indicated this, but it seems like when we have a, a few robberies, then that spurs more robberies. And so we'll have a lot of robberies within a short amount of time, and then things will kind of drop off and it, it may be you know, weeks or months before we have more robberies. So we've seen this type of stuff in the, in the past. Um, sometimes it's two or three robberies, sometimes it's more, uh, and then things kind of calm down for a little bit. So I, I can't really explain why we're seeing this, but um, we have seen th things like this in the past. I'd have to do some digging into that to find out, but I, I just, I guess anecdotally, I know we've seen this before in the past. Well, I don't know that that would necessarily help because there's not necessarily one common thread. I mean, we've got um, the, the one at Hy-Vee, that was, I guess, maybe kind of the outlier because that started off as a shoplifting. And then once that suspect was confronted, then he pulled the knife on the employee. The others, the suspects went into the business just with the intent of getting money from the business. So the Hy-Vee one, I, I'm not sure if you really want to kind of include that. It was certainly a robbery. The business was a victim as well, so that's why I added that in there. Um, but these others, I mean, we've got a couple of casinos. We've got some gas stations. It, it's not like they're concentrated in one area, so I don't know that we'd be able to pinpoint where extra patrols would, would be any use. Um, <clears throat> I know a lot of the casinos have changed over the years the way they've they've done things and a lot of them have really good quality surveillance videos those help uh, obviously we have suspects that cover their face but the nice thing about videos is you're able to get mannerisms so some people may walk a certain way people may be fidgety and that's why we like to release videos with those robberies because we're hoping that somebody will recognize some of those mannerisms whether it's a, a friend or a relative, and then call police. And what we're looking for is just a tip, you know, hey, that reminded me of, of so-and-so. And that's enough that we can follow up on. Um, sometimes those little pieces of information lead to something else. It may not be a, a direct solving of a crime just from a tip, but those little pieces kind of help detectives and guide them where they should be focusing their investigation. Well, the best thing they can do is just comply. You know, we don't want to see anybody hurt. Uh, you know, the cash can be replaced, property can be replaced, but if somebody gets injured from something like that, you know, there's a, there's a chance. I mean, if somebody has a knife or a gun, you don't necessarily know what they would be willing to do, and we don't want to see anybody seriously injured or even lose their life over some money. We'd rather just have the people comply. 
um, follow the directions of the robber, try to be a good witness. And, and that's one of the things that can be a little scary when you're in a situation like that is trying to remember those details. But the clerks are able to see things a lot clearer than the surveillance cameras. And so getting those details, you know, whether it's a logo on a hat or a sweatshirt or something on their shoes, all of those little pieces can help solve crimes. <clears throat> he didn't mention any weapons and he didn't show or, or sometimes people kind of make a motion like they may have some type of weapon in a pocket. He didn't do any of that. He just basically said that it was a robbery and got cash and left. Yeah, not off the top of my head, I don't. <clears throat> it does, uh, it, and I mean, we there's times when we can go, you know, weeks or months without a robbery. So, it, but when we see these flurries, I mean, we've seen them before in the winter. We've seen them in the summer. I don't know that it necessarily matters. The cash aspect. I guess the big question that we don't always know the answer to is why they need cash. You know, are they looking to buy presents or are they looking to get money for drugs? Um, do they owe somebody money for whatever? Do they owe rent money? I mean, there's any number of possibilities. I, I, I don't know that we necessarily know why people commit robberies. There have been some in the past that we've been able to figure out that there was a direct connection to drugs whether somebody owed somebody money for drugs or needed money for drugs. Um, but outside of that, I mean, it, it really, the possibilities are endless. I mean, why somebody needs cash. So it, it's, it's really hard to say. Yeah, I guess I'll just leave it at that. Uh, when was that one? think we've made an arrest but looks like the detective has been making some headway on this case but I don't I don't see anybody who's been arrested or charged yet no that would have been um, that the ones I did were, were where there's a the business is the victim and so that Salvation, Salvation Army bucket, that would have been like a personal robbery. Um, obviously, it wasn't their thing. It was on behalf of the Salvation Army, but it wasn't a, a business per se. <clears throat> Well, I, I guess I'll phrase it th this way. Is, I mean, we have a good clearance rate for robberies, which is essentially the amount that we solve. Uh, we quite often beat the national average. Um, not every robbery gets solved, but there's uh, quite a few of them that do. So I, I think, I mean, like I said, we're ahead of the national average. We have more solved robberies in Sioux Falls than compared to nationwide. But... Uh, you know, robberies can be difficult, and, and they involve a lot of 
really just good police and detective work to find suspects that are involved with these robberies. And so, yeah, that, that's kind of why we talked about those tips. Any type of information really can use, can be used to solve a robbery. So it doesn't matter what it is. You know, we're, we're looking for somebody just to help us out. And, you know, it may be that somebody owes some money for something and all of a sudden, you know, this person just pays off that, that money suddenly. Um, if that seems out of the ordinary, you know, maybe call police. It doesn't mean that you're necessarily accusing that person, but it's some information that detectives can follow up on. Um, quite often, the people that are committing robberies are covering their face or concealing their face to try to conceal their identity. It can make it challenging. It can make it difficult, but we still do have a good track record of solving robberies.